Good afternoon. I call the order of the Town Farm School uh, Board of Health meeting for Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. Uh, I apologize for the delay. We're having uh, technical issues with the um, hardwired recording and video. We have to wait for a remote to be set up. Um, roll call, please. Yes. Dr. Guadagnoli? Here. Tom Lee? Here. Dr. Leska? Here. Dr. Kiana? Here. John Norman? Here. Okay, so we do have a forum? Forum? Forum. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, I do have to um, just read the uh, meeting. This meeting of the Board of Health will be recorded and transmitted by the Information Technology Department of the Town of Barnes on Channel 18. Under Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, anyone else designed to make such a recording or transmission must notify the chair. Is anyone else recording this meeting? Seeing none, we'll move on to the agendas. Um, first item, this is a variance for septic. Pete McEntee, Engineering Works, representing Greg Monfit, Monfit, owner of 139 Meadow Lane, Marston's Mills, map parcel 134-017. This is a 196,890 square foot parcel with a failed septic requesting multiple variances. Good afternoon, Pete. Good afternoon, Peter McEntee with Engineering Works, representing Greg Monfit. Uh, Greg is having the septic uh, upgraded because of, uh, it's an H10 tank in the driveway and the septic system failed. Uh, so we're providing a, uh, a new septic system in maximum feasible compliance with the regulations. Uh, to do that, we are asking for um, four variances from the local regulations. Uh, chapter 360, Article 1, a 50-foot variant septic tank to vegetated wetland for a 50-foot setback. A 44-foot variance pump chamber to vegetated wetland for a 56-foot setback. A 12-foot variance SAS to vegetated wetland for an 88-foot setback. And then Chapter 360, Article 8E, well locations, 50-foot variance SAS to the well on site for a 100-foot setback. Um, we're pushing the, the system back as far as we can. Uh, so as not to get into the 100-foot um, radius from the existing well, uh, and then also uh, be as far away as we can from the bordering vegetative wetland associated with the wooded swamp. The wooded swamp borders on the salt marsh, and the entire property is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. No variance is being requested regarding uh, separation of the groundwater. Great, thank you for that. Um, rationale, this is a, a public hearing. If there's any members of the public that would like to speak on this item. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Um, staff report on this. Good afternoon. Uh, health inspector reviewed the plan and he just had one comment. Um, it appears to meet maximum feasible compliance. However, he was saying that if you switch the well with the SAS, you would eliminate number of variances, perhaps uh, all of the variances that are requested. Did you receive that comment from him? I didn't receive that comment. I mean, I, I mean that's a possibility, uh, trying to keep it uh, as least complicated as possible. <laughs> so, But it would, I imagine it would involve more costs to homeowner. Oh, yes, yeah, well it's about, usually about five yeah. or $6,000 cost for a while. And um, you know, my experience with well drilling is it's not 100%, and right. you have a working well to try and punch holes and hope you find it. Even if it's close, it's I've seen them come up dry, but uh, that's just my experience. Um, thank you for that, staff. Any um, members of the board? Any comments or questions? Tom Lee. One thing I want to one piece of the information this is important. If you look at I look at the groundwater flow. So the leaching SAS system is the downgrading of the existing drinking well. So if you're changing the positions, it would be a different story. Then your variance would be a lot more difficult for me yeah. to approve. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, downgrading, and um, but it also still meets the, right. you know, the state's requirement. Yeah. So for me, I'm fine with what you're okay. proposing. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for those that don't understand, downgrading means the, the underground water is flowing away from the well, from the septic area. So that's a, obviously a much better yeah. um, position to be in. Yes. 
Any other members of the board comments or questions? Just a comment uh, on the plan on, I guess, page two or whatever that has the one a thousand gallon pump chamber. Uh, yep. H10 rated. Then on the next page, it shows the uh, what? I don't know if there's a reason for the H10, but on the next page, it shows the pump chamber H20. Uh, so I, I don't know if that makes a difference. Well, why why is it 10? Is it on the uh, driveway? That could, be, that could be a table. I just want to take a look at my OMC uh, calculations here. So. Both the um, side profiles from uh, Acme Shuri shows H20s. The chamber tank and the yeah. pump. Yeah. Thank you. I would, I would assume, based on the location close to the driveway, they would want well, to go with the H20. I, I just, uh, so I, the typo I assumed was on the yeah, kind of the, let me just the double check that. Boil, boiler plate uh, side profile. Uh, but um, um, yes, uh, my buoyancy calculations are based on an H20, so I'll just change that on my plan. Yeah, if you can I also speak. thought that if something was going to happen in that island and they want to change the configuration of the driveway, you know, so. Yeah, it's always yeah. a better. It's, it's it's, pennies on the dollar for just changing a, it later. Narrowing that down the number of times that you say H10 and H20 <laughs> on the plan yeah. is good because. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even, in your, even under your design criteria, you list as H20. Yeah, so yeah, it's just a tech over we'll, we'll take care of that. Thank you. Um, any other comments, questions, gentlemen? And I would um, entertain a motion to approve just. Um, Staff, just make sure the final plan they submit does show that change to H20, and it's notated on that. So moved. I have a motion to approve um, this project as the variances have been submitted. A second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank Aye. you so much for your time. Um, next project on the agenda, uh, Darren Myers, Myers and Sons, representing Jonah Hearn. Owner of 640 Pompanessa Road, Catuit, at parcel 006 01E. It's a 20,500 square foot parcel, existing dwelling. This has a failed septic requesting multiple variances. Good afternoon, Darren. Good afternoon. Darren Meyer representing Jonah Hearn, 640 Pompanessa Road. Uh, simple uh, upgrade of a failed cesspool. The cesspool is currently in the backyard. Uh, we have an unfortunate situation with the existing plumbing where we can't uh, change that to the front yard. So we're stuck with uh, the outlet pipe in the back. Thus, we have to put the tank in the back uh, and then gravity feed to a, a leaching system in the front yard. Um, the variances that we need are um, uh, about 49.6 feet from the top of Coastal Bank for the, exist or for the proposed tank and uh, 14 feet from uh, the foundation wall for the proposed leaching. Uh, really, there is no other option here. Uh, we've already been through conservation, we've received a negative determination, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that rationale. This is a, a public hearing. If there's any members of the public that would like to speak on this item, please come forward. <coughs> Seeing none, close the public hearing. Um, staff report on this. Staff has no objections. Thank you for that. Members of the board, comments or questions? Pretty straightforward. Thank you for that, Darren. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve um, the project as um, submitted with the uh, variances listed. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous, Chair. Thank, Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it. Back again before us is uh, Peter McEntee, Engineering Works, representing Howard and Robin Reisman, owners of 21 Waterman Farm Road, Centerville, <coughs> Mac Parcel 206-007. This is a 4.9 acre parcel failed septic system requesting multiple variances. Good afternoon again. Okay. Uh, Pete McEntee from Engineering Works, representing the, Re the Reismans. Um, this uh, particular system is a functioning system with the exception of the leaching system, which is just root bound, and so they're doing a voluntary upgrade of that system. So uh, uh, the uh, list of variances here first. Um, for local upgrade approval, we have a one-foot variance to the depth of cover 
uh, over the SAS uh, because uh, I, the, bring, the higher I bring it up, the more um, it, it can influence uh, the breakout condition on the, uh, the top of the coastal bank that's adjacent to that. And um, 38 foot variance SAS to coastal bank for a 12 foot uh, setback. Local regulations are an 88 foot variance SAS to coastal bank because you have a 100 foot setback requirement for a 12 foot setback and a nine foot variance SAS to vegetative wetland for a 91 foot setback. Um, there's no uh, uh, town defined coastal bank there. The coastal bank uh, is simply a slope that comes up from Waterman Farm and doesn't really behave as a coastal bank. It's just in the flood zone and connected to the uh, coastal area. So um, it's uh, not what you perceive to be a a real coastal bank against the water body. <laughs> so we're going to connect um, at the distribution box that's up there and then just put uh, four or five hundred gallon changes in the ground. All righty, thank you for that rationale. This is a, a public hearing. If there's any members of the public that would like to speak on this item. Seeing none, it goes to public hearing. Um, staff report on this, please. Staff has no objections. The uh, engineer made some revisions to the plan after uh, being contacted by the health inspector, so we're, we're okay with the plan. Great, thank you for that. Members of the board, any comments or questions? Tom Lee? I don't have a comment in terms of design, but the concern that I have is because you are reducing the existing leaching area, and then you mentioned about wood bound, and then in your clause, one of your general notes in saying that the contractor shall remove all unsuitable material. Yeah. I'm wondering whether you should be out there and look at the soil material at the bottom to make sure it's clean. I can verify that. Sure. Yeah. 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 And you know, maybe you know, we, we dug test holes fairly close to the existing system, and the soils are all good. But uh, there's, um, you know, I don't know. Without digging up the whole system, you don't know exactly where those roots are throughout the whole system. So, but I, mean, I just don't want to leave it up to the contract. I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make that a condition? I'll go out there and I'll. Yeah, I agree with Tom. You know, sometimes he, you know they don't chase as much as they should. You'll yeah. find the gray soil, and they go, oh, "That's good enough." Yeah. I prefer if the engineer would sign off on that. Sure. I, I think your your client would appreciate the, the oversight yeah. also. Thank you for that, Tom. Anyone else? Tom, your question. It's hard to believe it's so tight in one corner with a five acre lot, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> See, you Glad think you have space, and then you have no space. There's a hole there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I would um, entertain a motion then to approve all the variances as submitted with the. Uh, uh, condition change of having the engineer on site at time of um, leaching excavation to verify soils. So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That is approved. Thank you so much for your Aye. time. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda was um, an extension or continuation of show cause hearings for sewer connections for Stewart Creek. Um, why don't we just, um, Tom, if it's okay, maybe you or Sharon go just go down the list quickly and just give us an update on where everyone's at. And those that we can do something with, we will, and those we can't, we'll just continue to send letters. Yes. Um, Thank you. And I do, I also want to update you on the legal department. Anything that was referred to legal, the assistant uh, town attorney, Charles McLaughlin, is going to work with us to uh, send out letters uh, threatening further legal action if, if they don't uh, comply. So we just have to work with him to get those letters prepared. Great. As, as far as your packet, uh, we haven't heard back from, uh, we've only heard back from, from a few here. Uh, 96 uh, Greenwood Avenue, you have a letter from Craig Fiddler. Uh, and uh, but in, in case, if there's no blizzard, he hopes to have it done by January 19th, is what he's saying. So that's number 96 uh, Greenwood. He has a permit and it should hopefully be done by January 19th. The next one is. Uh, should be done then? Yeah. Okay. Maybe just to you know, have D um, Engineering send us over a confirmation letter that they're up. Yeah. Just forward, it, forward them this list also. I mean, they know it, but just forward them the list and just say we're working on it, trying to help. 197, uh, they hired Doug Brown, and hopefully it'll be completed um, this week or next week. Next week, more likely. So that's that's that one, 197 Greenwood Avenue. Uh, 
54 Point Lane. I remember the gentleman came from Brockton. He started using a wheelbarrow, digging things up. Uh, that's not what we asked him do, to do, uh, but he was a little bit confused, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And we're not asking him to travel here again. Um, so. He has committed to a contract. He has committed to a contract. That's all we have on that one, Robert B. Howard. Yeah, as long as we get confirmation the water is shut off. I, I don't yeah. have an issue with delaying this because yeah. there's no flow, so discharge is zero. We haven't heard from any of the others. They haven't appeared at the meeting. Uh, we would like them to appear, uh, or we, or in the alternative, we can send out legal letters, whatever the board uh, at your pleasure, whatever you prefer. Yeah, once um, once legal department forms kind of a form letter and. We understand, you know, what laws, regulations, whatever we have to enforce. You know, we probably do a, you know, a presentation on that first. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I would want all the board members to know what we're doing if we vote to move forward. That, you know, we were we weren't we weren't the starting catalyst of someone losing their home. You know what I mean? So, I want the board members to feel comfortable with what we're using for enforcement, and I want to, you know, to balance it between what the town needs. You know, because obviously the pro forma on Stewart's Creek is, you know, only works if everyone's hooked up financially. So we, we want to balance. But, um, so if you can, you know, maybe just contact legal and just let them know that when they do have like a form letter or they can come in and just explain to us yeah. what rules, what regulations are being enforced and what the end game is. Sure. So you yeah. don't accidentally put something in motion that can't be stopped. You could ask, uh, perhaps I could ask for some bluff to come to the next meeting and do it. Five minutes. Yeah, just a presentation on what they are yeah. planning on doing. I mean, this is going to be a 30 year plan. It's yeah. not just Stewart's Creek. We're going to be you know, getting more and more of this as more and more of the town is sued. So we need to have a game plan going forward so that everyone's treated equally and not. Um, you know, we don't have anyone saying, oh, you're picking on me because you gave me this guy this much time and me only this time. So. This will be a regular agenda item. For the foreseeable future, you know that's that's what we've been asked to do is starting you know following up on these. Uh, the town council has asked that you know, and and the engineering has asked that we start using our authority to, to make these people hook up to get them to hook up. Well, it and seems like a strategy that is successful for him so far is just ignoring it. <laughs> I I, and, I can't <laughs> disagree that you know if you really put your feet down and. Don't want to move. It's like, what do you know? Where? What's our authority? Yeah. You know, where does it go? And you know, I've I've been told by some people that you know, good luck getting a judge to you know, take someone's home over this. Yeah. <laughs> and I I can't not agree. Like I wouldn't want my home to cake in if I couldn't afford to do this or we're having trouble. But right. the bottom line is, we do still need to do our due diligence as right. a board to enforce. Mm. So to make sure it's being applied equally to everybody, because the people that did hook up right away are like, hey, you know, I did my part, but this guy down the street's not doing it, isn't it? It's not helping Stewart's Creek, which was the genesis of everything, to clean up Stewart's Creek, so. Mm -hmm. All right, any comments or questions from the board? Then we'll move on from this agenda. Thank you, Tom and Sharon, for your diligence and work on this. The um, next item was moved to our 228 meeting, which brings us to septic installers, a uh, new permit. This is James Default Nashby. Sharon, what um, what did your background checks on this come up with, and did he pass the test? Yes, everything checked out fine. He had good references, passed the exam, and so forth. So he's all set to go. Great. Um, I would um, entertain a motion then to uh, from the wood to um, uh, issue a uh, installer's license for the town of Arsenal for James Default Nashby. So moved. Second. I have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you for that. Um, we have before us um, a um, proposed change. Uh, next item on the agenda is a town of uh, Barnesville Code Section 322-5 Outdoor Dining Regulation. Um, Tom, you want to do the rationale on this? Yes, sir. Rationale simply uh, past two years, the board has um, waived all outside dining requirements in the town of Barnesville during COVID-19. This year, 2023, have not, we have not heard anything from the state as far as uh, loosening the regulations, but Dr. Guadagnoli did ask uh, at our board meeting last spring or early summer if we could uh, 
proposed amendments that would be less restrictive permanently for outside dining. So I put together a list. So it's not just one amendment, but there's uh, multiple amendments proposed. Um, um, instead of 14 paragraphs, I'd like to reduce it to 10 paragraphs. And uh, that's why the first, par the first paragraph on top of the first page is to make an amendment to, uh, to change A14 to A10, so it would be A2 through A10. That's simple enough. The second one is a bit more complicated. Uh, it's to amend subsection A6. It, uh, the board previously required both screens and air curtains at any doorway that's used by wait staff. That, the rationale for that was, this was adopted one for about 40 years ago. If the screen door opens, the air curtain would stay on to prevent flies and insects from coming in whenever the screen door was open and closing. Uh, this, this proposal is to make it less restrictive by, by allowing either screens or air curtains. It also asks that you, um, this, it, it talks about only requiring a uh, self-closing screen at a window. This, this amendment, as you see in the next, the second paragraph here, is to allow for uh, a, either a, a automatic window or an automatic screen, one or the other, not both, and to, uh, to not just for the transfer of food, but for the transfer of monetary transactions. You see it, uh, or in the alternative, if they don't want to have an automatic window or a screen, they can have an air curtain. That's that amendment. The third item is to eliminate A, A number two, A number A seven, A nine, and B. Uh, and it's listed on the next page. You see A seven is requiring a drainage system in the ground to eliminate odors for outside dining. It require hose bibs, in other words, a place to connect your hose to wash down areas where that would be eliminated. Required dumpsters to be no closer than 50 feet from an outside dining area. Uh, this proposes to eliminate that requirement. Uh, number nine, it required the, the ground surface to be constructed of material readily cleanable and not susceptible to dust and moderate debris. So it proposes to eliminate that requirement to allow people to put tables and chairs just on the ground if they'd like. And, um, we no longer needed the, the exemption of the doorway air curtain for um, self-service because of the change that we made. But this proposal does uh, request a new subsection B to allow um, to allow for no screen door or and also no air curtain if they have a double set of say glass doors mm -hmm. and uh, they're not held open or prop, propped open by a rock or tied open, that they would self-close. So those are the proposed amendments, hopefully make it easier for uh, restaurants to provide outside dining. They would still be required to meet the grease trap size requirements and have bathrooms for the public uh, if they provide seats. That's all I have, thank you. Great, thank you for this, Thomas. This was um, very well thought out. I appreciate your time invested in this. Um, this is a, um, public hearing and um, at this time I just if anyone from the public would like to speak on it we're not going to take an action on this um, the timing of this is very good because I wanted this to sit out here for about 30 more days sure. let um, restaurant owners the business people take a look at this make any recommendations before we make a final motion but yet it would be something in place uh, well before the summer season starts nobody's out to a dining now so we'll, uh, we'll you know I appreciate you getting these regulation changes proposed uh, in early here um, but we, we do want to hear if anyone from the public came to speak on this item. Uh, please come forward and speak on this. At this time, we'll be having another public hearing before we make any uh, final vote on it. Seeing none. Um, so let's just get this posted on the town website and, you know, some send it out to some of the uh, businesses and restaurant associations and some of the hmm. people and see if they have any comments before we make a uh, final vote on it. Um, any members of the board with comments or questions on that? I got a question about the last one. Uh, the Board of Health may waive the requirement to provide a screen door or air curtain at a doorway if there are two sets of doors provided in series in the doorway, at the doorway, which are not 
which are not propped open. Uh, is that common? In, I mean, I, I don't think in the years I was on, been on the Board of Health, I don't think I've ever seen that regulation. Oh, the two no, sets of doors, where did that come from? It came from, uh, where did the idea come from? Health inspectors came with the idea that they've seen it in some of the restaurants, and this is what they, they, they said. Other, other towns? Other towns or? Oh, I don't know about other towns, but our, our inspectors have seen it in this town at some of the restaurants. <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not at many restaurants, but at some of them. Yeah. Yeah, some of them have double sets of doors. So it's basically, you know, you open the one door, you step in, that one shuts behind you. There's like well, a lot of space, and then the you sit there. That's one. Automatically it's just if they, if, yeah, if they automatically have, closes, but if it doesn't automatically close, well, all, all commercial doors have a hinge uh, spring system on them. They have to close by a fire code. They have to close the building code. Huh. Well, um, the, so that's why, like every door you walk in, it's like trying to push you through because the spring is loaded. So. I should. I could add the word self-closing doors if you can that sense if, if, if that makes. They they it's they have it's, to re, have it's a redundancy because they have to have them for the billing code. So, um, but that's what that's what that is. Did that answer that, Paul? Yeah, I mean as long as it's self-closing, that's fine. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it just if someone has an existing setup like that, we're just telling them you don't have to have the other thing, the screen or the or the air or the air curtain. Mm -hmm. Being somewhat familiar with Dr. Waddick only, <laughs> I, I suspect he said something like, given the fact that we've survived for two years. You did say that. Yes. <laughs> could we please come up with, and I, thank you. Oh, for, well, I, I, this, yeah. Could we come up with something that's a little bit more friendly to the community? And, and thank you. I, I think this looks very good. It'll be interesting to see what the, what the okay. restaurateurs say. Yeah, so like I said, I, I don't want to take any action on it right now. We'll give it another 30 days. We'll uh, put it out there in the public. We'll put it on the website. We'll put it out to uh, people to uh, take a look at and let them know it's on our agenda for the uh, February meeting. And if they have comments or questions come to the meeting, we can make amendments. But um, if everything looks good, we'll, we'll act on it in February. That'll be plenty of time for compliance in the spring. I can ask Diana to send an email to the restaurant. She has the email addresses. Yeah, the, the business trades or restaurant trade association, Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, something like that for Barnstable. You know, just let the restaurants know this is what we're proposing. So if there's comments or questions. All right, thank you for that. We'll um, move on and continue I, that item. One other simple question. Sure. Could you just explain an air curtain? So if, if some places have it, you walk in and you feel that like burst it's of just, air in. It's just a, it's enough that flies don't have fan. the strength to penetrate it. Got it. Just a little bit of a fan system. Yep. Okay. Um, the, you know, when we're talking about that, the restaurant over near the airport, they had uh, right. they, they had uh, windows, didn't they, that uh, Palm were open? Or? Palm Debian, they have a big wide open. Yeah. Yes, yes. How does that work? Air, air curtains. Air curtains. Yeah. No screen is set. The board allowed air curtains there. But they're not doors, they're just windows. It's, yeah, it's no... Big it's window. a big rectangular blow, right. a blower that blows down. Mm -hmm. A little positive pressure. Okay, so we'll continue that to our um, February, what is it, 28th? 28. Mm -hmm. February 28th meeting. Um, and we don't need to vote on that because it's, um, it's a proposed uh, regulation change. Um, the final item on the agenda would be the review of uh, minutes from our December 20th, 2022 meeting. Any comments or questions from board members on the minutes? I would entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes as written. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's approved unanimously. That um, ends our agenda for tonight if, uh, or this afternoon. Any comments or questions? Paul? Yeah. Uh, years in past years, we've had uh, every once in a while, there was a young lady worked at the the health department from Brewster, I forget her name. And she used to prepare uh, a paper on <clears throat> the tight tanks in town and when they were uh, pumped and how that worked. What, what was that girl's name, Tom? Oh, Karen, Karen Malkus? Yes, Karen Malkus. Could we get something like that too to, to look at for the board? 
Oh, you want an update on the Titanic? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yes. It's interesting that how the, the, the tight, some of the tight tanks, there are some I think as big as uh, 2,500 gallons or 3,000 gallons. Yeah, I was having a discussion mm -hmm. with um, with Tom before the meeting about, you know, looking at, you know, there's a way to get zero discharge of, of nitrogen is to put in a tight tank for just your black water. So if you were building a brand new home, you would plumb one set of lines for your gray water, which is laundry, sinks, showers, things like that. And then you would have your black water, which is the toilets, go into a tight tank. 1.2 gallons per flush, you know, you might take it three to four months to fill up a 2,000 gallon tank. And then that way, you can meet all of the criteria for zero discharge of nitrogen in your a nitrogen sensitive area. And you might even be able to fit, you know, and the, the cost of plumbing would probably be somewhere around $1,500 in a, in a new construction um, application and the cost of a tank to install maybe another couple of thousand for the tank and another thousand or two for the labor. You might be, you know, five or six grand, the whole thing, and you've created a property with zero discharge. So a lot of those options are being kicking, kicked around too. With the, yeah, there is one of those in town that I know of mm -hmm. that's at 130 cent a lane. And they have, the, you know, they have a tight tank for the black water. And, yep. And the, the, the interesting thing is neighbors say they've never seen that uh, tank pumped. So we they looked into it a few years ago and there was a couple of pumps. But uh, you wonder if, what, the, what the story is. But yeah. Anyways, but, if we could get up. The pumping uh, records are all recorded at the uh, treatment plant. They can get those records pretty easily. Yeah, it would they, also be dependent on use, wouldn't it? If they go to work. Yeah. I mean, if, if you have, you know, one, one point two gallons per flush, yeah. you yeah. know, the old saying, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down, you know. You train your kids and say, you know, don't flush it, it's absolutely necessary. You could stretch it out maybe six months. Well, and if you didn't live there, well, And if you're only a summer resident, you know, you might only pump it once a year. So there's, there's all sorts of options out there. I know everyone's panicking about the proposed DEP regulations and we're looking into that and we're making recommendations, but there are other options that are not as costly. But again, if the town of Barnesville gets its um, water, um, watershed, watershed permit because of our shared watersheds with Mashpee and Yarmouth, if we get DEP to approve, mm -hmm. then it doesn't really affect town of Barnesville if it's five years from now. So. But um, any other discussion? Then we'll just um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have Second. a motion. Second. Second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.